In this video, we'll do some basic time value of money calculations to learn the NPV and IRR functions of Excel, as well as get some practice with goal seek and maybe a data table. So first, I'll set up a cash flow problem here. Okay, what we see is that we have a discount rate of 10%, which means a dollar a year from now is worth roughly 10% less today. And we have five periods we're dealing with. Period zero really is kind of meaningless, but all these cash flows are at the end of each period. So the end of period zero is the beginning of period one. So at the beginning of period one, we have a cash flow of negative 1400. That's our investment. At the end of period one, we have a positive cash flow of 1000. And at the end of the following three periods, we have a posh positive cash flow. So what we'd like to do is know what are those cash flows worth to us today, and we can use a PV factor for that. It's equal to 1 over 1 plus the discount factor, and I'm going to hit F4 to get absolute references on that, and take that to the power of the period. If I copy-paste, then we see that a dollar four periods from now is worth about 68 cents today. So the actual discounted cash flows are equal to the cash flow times the PV factor. I can copy paste that as well. I'm going to align all these to the right side of the cell by hitting Alt H to get me to the home menu. A R to do this align right. So Alt H A R align those right. And we can see more clearly what the what the cash flows are worth to us today. So if we sum up the present value of the future cash flows, then that $1,400 investment would result in a value today of about $3,100. So if we say less the investment, we can calculate the net present value of this project. as 1770. Now it would be tempting to use the Excel NPV function to calculate net present value. And it's equal to NPV. It asks for a discount rate first. We'll give it the discount rate. And then it asks for a series of cash flows. So we'll come up here and give it the series of cash flows. And when we look at that answer, we see that it's different than the answer we'd gotten before. You may remember from the previous video that I can show extra decimal places with Alt H0, Alt H0. And so we're looking at 1769.87 by summing up the present value of the future cash flows and the investment. But when we try to use the NPV formula, Looking at the cash flows, we get the wrong answer. And the short reason for that is because this NPV formula doesn't really calculate net present value. It thinks that the first cash flow happens at the end of the first year and therefore discounts it. So before we find a way to get around that, let's think first what the NPV function is doing. If we ignore that first cash flow, it's really giving us the same answer that we got by summing the discounted cash flows. And so Excel's NPV function is really a PV function. It's not netting out the investment in this case. The way to net out that investment would simply be to add it. It's already a negative, so we can algebraically add it to the present value of the future cash flows using the NPV function, and then we get the correct answer. Now, this would be a great time to use one of my favorite Excel tools, which is Goal Seek. I remember from finance class that when we find the discount rate that makes the net present value equal to zero, then we've found the internal rate of return of the project. We know that with Goal Seek, if we start on the target cell and hit Alt A W G, then that set cell is already populated for us. So our shortcut is really Alt A W G tab 
because we'll always be ready to move to that second window. We want to set that to a value of zero by changing the discount rate. And then we find that the internal rate of return of the project is about 61%. So that would be an outstanding project if we could get it. We'll take that all day long. It's the discount rate that gives the NPV of zero. I'm going to set this back to 10% by clicking Control Z for undo. And let's see if we can get that 61% in another way. When we say rate of return or internal rate of return, we are talking about the discount rate that gives us an MP of zero. There's an IRR function in Excel that says just give me the values and I'll find the rate of return. And we get the same answer. We could look at that to as many decimal places as we needed and we get the same answer. In fact, we could say what would the net present value of this project be for various discount rates? And anytime we're saying what would the sensitivity of an output be to different inputs, it's a good time for a data table. So let's build a data table and let's look at discount rate and NPV. And in fact, let's look at NPV the first way and NPV the second way and make sure that they're the same for all these different discount rates. I'm going to skip a row and you can see this in the data tables video, but then I'm going to start with 0%, 5%, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 5%. We'll use this trick of grabbing that handle and dragging it down to about 80%. And in the data tables video, it will tell you to then put the two outputs you want on this empty row. Just to be clear, let's set our outputs of this model using an Alt HJ. And our input to this model using an Alt HJ. And now, when we do the data table, it will be much more clear the inputs and the output. Alt AWT. And there are no row inputs. This is our the input to our model. We don't need to change that with anything in rows, but we do want to change it with something in columns. So we're going to leave row blank and populate the column input cell here. And then what Excel will do one at a time, it will put zero in cell D2, and then it will capture D11 and D13 and paste them over here. And then it will put 5% in D2 and capture D11 and D13 and put them over here. So when I hit OK, it does them all very quickly. Well, if we remember from the previous video, we can copy and do an Alt H B S T paste formats. And what we see is that low discount rates, we have a nice net present value. At high discount rates, our negative net present value goes negative, which makes sense. Interestingly, that changeover happens between 60 and 65 percent, right exactly at the 61 percent rate of return that we had. This might be a good time to draw a chart. Anytime we're doing an XY scatter chart, there's a shortcut for that. Alt N for insert and D for scatter chart. And then we can use our arrows to choose which one we like. Let's choose this one. I'm going to click on one of those labels, one of those X axis, right click, format the axis, and tell it to put the labels low. And now we can see a little bit better. We'll do charts in a different video, but for now, we can see our NPV versus discount rate. Remember, the NPV Excel function is very different than net present value for the reasons we talked about. But you're going to hear me say NPV uh, when I mean net present value. I do not mean the Excel function necessarily. It's not as confusing as it sounds once we get used to it. We have a chart that shows how NPV changes with discount rate. Where that chart crosses 0% is our 61% rate of return. Now let's imagine for a moment that this project, while it doesn't cost very much and it throws an awful lot of cash for a nice net present value and rate of return, what we didn't realize 
was that it now has an abandonment liability. So at the end of the life of the project, we're going to have to pay another $2,800 uh, to abandon the equipment, let's say. It would have a PV factor and a discounted cash flow, and we could update our formulas accordingly. By the way, every time I go to a cell and edit it, that's hitting the F2 key, F2, to edit a formula. And notice that our rate of return in this method went to 8%. And our chart shows that we have at very low discount rates, we have a negative NPV. But at a little bit higher discount rate, we have a positive NPV. But then at very high discount rates, we have a very negative NPV. So if we said that the rate of return was the discount rate, which gives us zero NPV, does, is the rate of return here or is it here? Let's see, if I put in about an 8%, I get a pretty low NPV, and I can find out what exactly it would be. If I put in about a 32%, I also get something very near zero. So remember when we typed in the IRR, one of the options we had was to give it a guess. So if I guessed 8%, and I did an alt H0, alt H0, we'd find out that 7.57% is a rate of return of this project. But then if I guessed 32%, I'd find out that 31.6 is also a rate of return of this project. So if in finance class you talked about dual rates of return, this is a perfect example of a dual rate of return problem. It's a little bit spooky because you think, well, gosh, could anything have two rates of return? Only when we have negative to positive to negative cash flows or vice versa. So if you have two sign changes in your cash flows, then it's possible to have a dual rate of return. This is the perfect way to find out if you have a dual rate of return over any rates, discount rates of interest. So in this video, we've calculated net present value using both PV factors and discounted cash flows and using the Excel NPV function and got the same answer. We learned the intricacies of the NPV function and why most authors say that it's misnamed, but we learned how to get around that by pulling the first cash flow out of the NPV function and adding it before we calculate the NPV of the future cash flows. We got some practice with a data table. This time it only had a column input. And we had two outputs and we got practice with a chart. I hope you got something out of this video.